Don Lemon's much-awaited interview with Elon Musk is out on YouTube now. The former CNN anchor was set to launch a new show on X, but that deal fell through after Musk was apparently displeased with how the conversation went. Here's a clip on the Great Replacement Theory. Let's take a listen. Can we talk about the Great Replacement Theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the Great Replacement Theory, you claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border, you said that they're, the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? Right. Um, well, you're conflating two things. One is great replacement theory. Uh, the other is, which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants wish, I think, have a, a very strong bias to, at least everything I've read, it's a very strong bias to vote Democrat. Um, the, the more, more that come into the country, the more they're likely to vote uh, in that direction. But it, it is, in my view, uh, an, the, a simple incentive to increase uh, voters to Democrat voters. And on content moderation, Lemon pressed the ex-owner on whether he and the social media giant should be responsible for moderating content on the platform. Here's what he said. You look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you? Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings, attributed social media to Radicalizing. So, so, Don, you love censorship, is what you're saying? No, I don't love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in censorship. Is a, it's a, moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. The interview, which grew testy at times, also touched on transgender rights. You have been deeply outspoken about the issue of trans rights. You posted trans rights. You uh, posted that pronouns and bio mean the woke mind virus ate your brain. Do you know what the term woke actually means? Um, it's come to mean a lot of things. But what it actually, what originally it was meant to mean, it's just being aware of inequities in society and, and being aware of facts and, and history. Yeah, I think it's come to be, I think, I think being aware of inequities in society is fine, of course. Um, but uh, trying to blame everything uh, on, on trying to make everything a race issue is, uh, I think, a divisive and corrosive to society. First I, of all, I would like to get some kind of remuneration for every time someone takes my what does woke mean line and tries to use it on somebody else on the right. But again, I didn't mean it as a gotcha well, question. Well, this is a flesh-eating <laughs> virus that embeds itself <laughs> in your brain, Brianna, and turns you into Don Lemon, who I also wanted to share this reporting yeah. from the New York Post, uh, which the Post claimed they obtained a document saying that um, in contract negotiations, Don Lemon had asked for a free Tesla Cybertruck, a $5 million upfront payment on top of an $8 million salary, an equity stake in X, and the right to approve any changes in X policy, again, according to the New York Post. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's kind of immaterial. Yeah. I mean, Don Lemon's character isn't really, I think, was an issue here. I think many people have had frustrations with Don Lemon from across the political spectrum for a lot of different reasons, and I think more substantive reasons than just that he wants to get paid. Um, well, let's take each of these. Because I was actually bristling. To, I, I, I mean, again, to be clear, I think... Elon Musk says he supports free speech, and it's a pretty bad look offering this show with a kind of adversarial person and then canceling it the second they say things you don't like. I think that posture is not good. I think it's fair to ask. I think it's fair to ask unfair questions. Is that a, is that a right way to phrase that? But in, in fact, I did not like particularly the middle question. But let's start with the great replacement. The great one. replacement theory. So Elon Musk, I think, clearly tries to dodge out of supporting the great replacement theory. 
Um, I would have liked a how do you define the great replacement theory question actually more than a how do you define woke question here because I want to know what Elon Musk does and does not think qualifies. Now, generally speaking, it is the theory that there is either passively or actively an effort to replace the white character of the country mm -hmm. via immigration and that that is a bad thing and that immigration ostensibly should be limited uh, to preserve white majority in the United States of America. And there have been comments that uh, that uh, Elon Musk has made on Twitter that seem to support said theory. One he had to apologize for because there was an advertiser boycott. I don't know if you remember this a few months ago. Um, someone, not Elon Musk, uh, had commented, Jewish communities have been pushing this exact kind of dialectic dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them, saying that basically, um, to the extent that Jewish people were mad that there wasn't more, more and more people backing them up over Israel, this was an earlier stage in the war in particular, in the conflict in particular, that they, they got what they deserved because they've been siding with minorities and doing woke stuff for some time, um, and that they basically deserve what they get now that the, the black and brown majorities aren't backing them up politically in this instance. And Elon Musk responded, you have said the actual truth. And there was a lot of backlash from that. There was a statement from the White House over it, and he eventually walked those statements back. But that certainly isn't the only time that he's dabbled in this idea that there are, is some kind of threat to white America presented by uh, immigration. And in this interview, they talk at length about the claim that's been made by a lot of conservatives recently on, online that Democrats wanting to have, quote unquote, open borders is about them wanting to juice the census so that right. um, the census being count, uh, counting people, counting bodies and not just American citizens. Which is how means the census, that you could. Yeah, this is how, this, how the census works. So right. Don Lemon, it was but kind that, of a non sequitur. He's not saying they're voting. He's saying this increases. Right. And he explains that. But it doesn't make sense if you think of the fact that most of the border states that would be implicated by this and get the benefit of having more districts drawn because of a, a larger population are, in fact, red states. And to the extent that well, Republicans, no. it's, if they aren't, border well, states they, aren't they red stay, states. If they stay in those states, yes. But there's more illegal immigrants in California Right, but that's, Texas. that's the next point I was going to make, which is that Republicans are the ones that are busting these immigrants to blue states and sending them to the Hamptons and to New York and the like. So what does that mean? Are Republicans... Can they have it both ways that the there's an advantage in having immigrants in your state because it helps you set the census numbers and get you more congressional district, or are immigrants bad and you should bust them to New York? I, I guess we should bust all the illegal immigrants to Pennsylvania and Michigan and Georgia and Arizona or something. Um, well, no, those are if, if you're thinking states. from a strategic sta standpoint. No, you should bust them to, to red states. You have more congressional districts, so you have more representation in the House. That's the argument right. that these people are making. Right. Not a state that maybe is sometimes red and sometimes blue. But like, so that's all to say. I think that's actually an interesting area of inquiry. I don't think that that um, Don Lemon explored it especially well in that exchange. But maybe we should move I, on. To I want to definitely clubs. get to the second one because there, I I, I, I was just as annoyed with Don Lemon doing this as I was with whichever senator asked this of Mark Zuckerberg in one of the many hearings where they go, why is this up on the platform? How, why have you not taken it down? Like, the CEO of the company is not, is setting policy. But oh, like, you're talking about the down. racist tweets on Twitter yeah. question. Things okay. get taken down when they get flagged. And like, why is there, why is there one specific piece of content that should not be up is not really, doesn't prove anything. Um, and there have been there have been vile and bad posts that were up prior to Elon Musk's takeover that did not get taken down. And subsequently, there's well, a lot of content out mm. there. If it gets flagged, if it gets complained about, it, it's not. No one is the, the leader is not of the place is not responsible. They're they're actually literally not liable for it because that's what Section 230 is about. That's a different question. So for one. There are ample instances that you can find where people say, I flagged this a million times. Many people have flagged this. It has not been taken down. So I don't think that you can attribute it to, well, no one has a problem with racist Wojak tweets, but everyone has a problem with Elon Jets or whatever, yeah. whatever few things that he has well, taken some down. Of them don't violate, I mean, just, just well, let's talk about, violate the policy. Let's talk about Twitter policy. This Sometimes is, it does, this is Twitter's it. hateful conduct policy. You may not directly ta attack other people on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, caste, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, religious affiliation, age, disability, or serious disease. Okay. The question, the, the problem that's being articulated here, which is frankly is a problem that was articulated by Jack in different, a different political direction, was that people feel as though their reported 
instances of being attacked on the basis of their race or any of these other categories is being selectively moderated. And that Elon Musk is not paying attention or not taking things down when they are attacking black people or trans people or gay people or whatnot. I mean, but if something attacks Elon Musk personally or one of his allies who often will tag him into a tweet and say, hey, Elon, my friend who follows me, can you address this? Then he addresses it very readily. So it does seem to be and this I, is an in character. That's the ADL we, spin of it. I don't know if that's. Well, I, I don't. I'm not the ADL, and I certainly don't align myself right, with I the ADL. Well, I know, which is why. But I, I'm, I'm. I'm not talking about the ADL. I'm talking about what many like. I mean, I can sit here and pull up examples myself. But there, the people on the left has have observed that pro Palestine um, violence against Palestinians has not been addressed and take down. I, the so if you if you obviously and rightly so say I want to kill a bunch of Jewish people that would rightly be taken down. If you say I want to kill a bunch of Palestinians that would not rightly be taken down. Remember when he came back from wait wait a minute. Remember when he came back from Israel and established as policy after meeting with Netanyahu that if you use the phrase "river to the sea" you would be yeah. banned. Right after the after an anti hate speech group, the Anti Defamation League right. and others tried to th threatened his business, threatened you know, told. Advertisers to stop right. working with X, and but, yeah, that had a sure, change, and sure, I was against sure, it. Sure, but at the end of the day, that's Elon Musk bending the knee to that lobbying effort. That's Elon Musk making a policy choice that is not what he said he was going to do, which was to respect speech across the board, but to selectively enforce this kind of speech. So I think the criticism, oh. again, I don't think that Don Lemon is making the right argument, but the core of the argument, which is that he has selectively um, moderating speech on ide ideological grounds, I think is true. Well, I don't know about that, but that does it for our show today. Tomorrow on Rising, we'll be back right here, just like always. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you later. Bye-bye.